It's been an eventful week in the fast-changing world of artificial intelligence. On Tuesday, Sam Altman announced he's returning as OpenAI's CEO four days after he was pushed out of the company that created ChatGPT. Several board members have been replaced, and Altman says he's now looking forward to returning to OpenAI. Joining us now from Montreal is Joshua Bengio, one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence. And before we start, Mr. Bengio, I just want to say congratulations on winning Canada's most prestigious science prize earlier this month, the Hertzberg Canada Gold Medal for Science and Engineering. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start by asking you about the events this week. Now, I know you might not want to get specific about uh, the events surrounding OpenAI, but what does this bring up for you in terms of the direction of this space? Well, the thoughts I have about this, um, well, first, I, I don't have enough information. I think uh, most people don't um, to comment specifically on what's going on, but I think it raises a lot of interesting questions that we should have in public and uh, that is about governance. So what kind of uh, board, what kind of uh, governance should be uh, directing in which direction these uh, very powerful frontier AI systems are being developed? Um, and and uh, is this governance process making sure that the public is protected? Because companies are competing with each other and they have to survive and uh, they might be willing to cut corners. We've seen that already in the past, uh, not just in AI, but it's it's a, it's a you know, property of how markets work. It's a, it's also, you know, something that makes them innovate faster sometimes. But because of that, uh, I think it's really important that the these industries be regulated, that the uh, um, society puts guardrails to make sure that, yes, you can compete, but make sure you don't go through red lines that could be dangerous for the public. Um, and for that, you need a process. You know, you talk about the dangers of, of AI. Let me ask you this. How has AI impacted the Israel-Hamas war? In general, my reflection about this is wars like this are a kind of accelerator for the advances in AI, especially, you know, in their application in the military. Um, this might not be a good thing. I mean, it, there are reports that Israel's choosing AI to, to using AI rather, and in the Ukraine war as well, to choose targets. So is that something that's concerning to you? It is. I, I've been speaking about that danger for almost a decade now. Uh, the, the issue of using AI, uh, not just to recognize people in pictures, but that could be embedded in a drone that could choose who to shoot and that the decision to kill is something that would take place without a human intervention. And that's called the lethal autonomous weapons, uh, killer robots in, in, you know, in simple terms. Um, and, and there are lots of moral, but also security um, dangers, uh, threats to the uh, stability of uh, our societies and geopolitical stability that I think uh, require uh, a lot of precaution before we move there too quickly. Yashua Bengio, thank you so much for your time, as always, on this subject. My pleasure.